Hi everyone, I'm Leandra Franich and it's time to introduce you to topic 3 for 2015 on the Paper Artsy blog and topic 3 is all about paint. Now, paint is something that I've had a massive interest in for many years. I've got absolutely no formal training in it, it's not something that I have any expertise in whatsoever and most of what I've learnt is just stuff that I've picked up as I've gone along. Um, to know about paint in the really nitty gritty detail, basically you need to be a paint chemist. There's a science around this whole uh, industry and so it, I kind of figured out now that it falls into two categories, the paint that I buy. It's either a craft paint made by craft companies, scrapbooking companies, or it's a fine art paint made by well-known brands like Liquitex, Golden, Windsor & Newton, those sorts of brands that we've seen on shelves of art shops for years. With fine art, so I'm, I'm going to talk a little bit about the differences and how you need to how you use those. But at the end of the day, what paint you buy is always comes down to personal preference, what you're using it for, and which paint you like. People can argue till they're blue in the face that one brand is better than another brand, but it always boils down to what you prefer to work with. Now. Fine art paints always have a colour palette that mirrors from brand to brand. Um, they use a lot of words similar and a lot of colour names are the same across to, uh, from brand to brand. And within a brand there will be a range of paints uh, ranging from student grade up to what they call artist grade paints. So it's a price point. The student grade paints are cheap and the artist grade paints are the, usually the most expensive. Why is that? It's all because it's exactly the same colour, whether you get a red in a student grade or the same red in the fine art, it's the same colour, so it boils down to the pigment load in the paint and the other ingredients that they use to make those paints. Um, so they might use more expensive ingredients in the base of some of their fine art paints compared to what they use in their student grade. There'll also be a variety available on the shelf of viscosity of that paint. So you might get a heavy body fluid, a heavy body acrylic, or you might get a fluid acrylic. You can create that yourself with your standard paint that you have if you use a gel medium. The gel mediums always come in various thicknesses. There's heavy gels through to soft gels. And the purpose of gel medium is to change the viscosity of your paint, to alter it without altering the colour or without compromising the integrity of the colour. So it's a bit of fun. You can be your own paint chemist at home, mucking about with your mediums and your paints. So really buying paint depends on how deep your pockets are pretty much, what you want to pay for the brand. Um, <clears throat> the shelf life of most of those fine art paints is always pretty good. Their paint chemists are exceptional. They've been working in the industry for years and they know what it takes to make a good paint. So those paints are always going to be very reliable and it's really what the, the shelf life from what I've noticed, the shorter shelf life tends to be based on metallic paints. Metallic paints seem to have a lot shorter shelf life than your standard colour paints. So on to craft paints, how do they vary? Well usually craft paints are made by craft companies or scrapbooking companies and they might base the palette of their craft paints to match a line of papers that they're doing if they're a scrapbooking type company. Um, they're also looking for a particular price point. Perhaps the pigmentation and the colour is less important um, and they're really looking to make a user friendly paint that is, is, is to be used and perhaps not sit on the shelf and just be stroked. <laughs> So where do frescoes fit into all of this? Well in 2011 when we released frescoes, which we're moving into our fifth year of fresco paints now, there was nothing on the market that suited us to stamp on top of easily. All the paints that were available at that time had a very glossy shiny finish to them and it really meant that you had to use an ink like stays on to stamp on top to get good results and that would dry fast. So that was our primary thing. We wanted a matte effect paint that would be really user friendly, dry fast, good coverage and versatile. We also wanted to be able to bring a product to the market that was really good value for money. So it was common here when we released our paints for a small 30ml container to have to pay around the £5 mark. So we wanted to offer a bigger volume, 50 mils, and um, our price point ended up being £3.95, which we think is a really good price point. That means that crafters didn't have to be precious about the fresco paint. 
And then most importantly, we wanted a colour palette that was really user friendly. So we came up with the idea of having light, medium, dark, super dark in our, within every colour group. And that meant that if you work with all the lights, they're of a similar tone or value. If you work with all the mediums, um, it's the same sort of thing. So most of our paints are opaque. But in, in, in addition to that, we've got a few, as you know, that are translucent and a bit brighter. And we use those for colouring in and perhaps colour mixing and altering, altering colours. So for us, frescoes are not out there to... Um, we didn't want to reinvent the wheel. There was no point in bringing a paint to the market that when there's so many already available that tick all the boxes um, for fine art, the fine art type category. That was not what we wanted to do. We wanted a user-friendly paint that would go on any surface and um, you didn't have to be precious about. So that's frescoes in a nutshell. Let's just quickly show you some of these art samples that we've got here. So if I start over here, um, years and years ago I was making these journal covers and they're using Lumiere paints which are a highly metallic paint and I used to stamp squares uh, onto the fabric and any type of fabric, this is a polyester and this one here is a black one uh, onto a cotton. So I just stamp the actual um, squares and then put an image in black over the top. Sometimes I did a bit of sewing and added other embellishments. It's quite fun working on fabric, it's something I've done for years and I really really enjoy. Some of these other samples you might have seen uh, recently anyway. This big one at the back you haven't. This is a sample that Lynn Brown made when her stamps first came out and uh, she was really rocking the whole autumnal and the translucent type of paints. So she um, created a background using the Tim Holtz tissue, um, one, of the, one of his tissues that comes on a roll and then you can see that script through the background. She then blocked out with white using some of her bold stamps and then washed over the top with a translucent. Now that is a really cool um, panel to start with and then she built up her flowers on top using more opaque colours. Uh, to create the detail in those. Frescoes also work perfectly well onto glass. This little bottle here, um, it, it really shows you how easy that is. Um, there's even a little bit of metallic glaze on there, adding a touch of sparkle onto the flowers. Um, this is another project over here which we did at one of our artsy crafts. And um, as I mentioned in the blog post that accompanies this video, um, rather than paint all of these little boxes, um, we decided that it would be much faster to spray. So we watered down the paint with, um, into a little sort of a mini mister type spray bottle and then just squirted the paint in and around. And this is actually a double sided thing so you can see how difficult it would have been to try and paint the whole thing. So that was sprayed with two or three colours, a cream and a blue. The sample on the blog is Lynn's sample and that was done in greens. This panel here is another um, one of Lynn's projects that she did for me for a retailer training day we did in 2014. And she's just used the paints um, in, you know, on everything on this project and she was actually using one of her limited edition sets of paints. Um, here she's got stencil bump technique going on on the flowers and she's even stamped script over the very top. Little bits of treasure gold on the leaves that have been die cut and then using the translucence to add a little bit of interest and in colour where she's coloured in certain elements. So this birdhouse was another one of um, Lynn's and my Artsy Crafts projects that we did. It was all a kit set thing that we designed the wood and had the wood all specifically cut for it. And then it was a lot of fun putting it together and assembling everything. The roof itself is crumpled tin foil that was then wrapped around and coloured with paint. Um, and so you get the nice, where the tinfoil was crumpled, you get that real sort of vein structure coming through. And then the actual project itself was covered with metal. So on the sides here, you can see the 10 Second Studio um, metal panels that we used and the patterns from those. On the back, you've got another technique where we just put uh, strips of card underneath there and really then highlighted it embossed it with a, a wheel to make those patterns. So it was quite a lot of fun. And on the front as well there was more cardboard cutouts and then we sort of put metal on top and embossed around which creates that uh, interesting texture and that's why the metal shines through because you'd sand a little bit of the paint off the top and it just highlights the metal. 
So I'm sure there's plenty of things for you to experiment with with paint over the next two weeks. Participate in the challenge on the Paper Artsy blog, but whichever paint you want to use, I hope you can take time to share some of your ideas with us via the blog. If you want to look up ideas on our blog, then just use the search bar um, and type the word fresco paint or acrylic paint into that and you will come up with lots of ideas. Similarly, you can look at Pinterest or our YouTube channel. There's plenty of videos and things going on um, with heaps of ideas. So I'm really looking forward to this week, seeing what you all come up with. And we'll see you back here next time on the Paper Artsy YouTube channel.